Hi, uh, it's David Sweet here, I'm one of the consultant neonatologists. Uh, today I want to talk you through the RPAP Inspire uh, alternative means of delivery room stabilisation, which is a means of allowing early respiratory support with CPAP and the ability to give mum to uh, the giver mum the baby for early skin to skin care. So, uh, just to show you, this is the RPAP driver. This is an RPAP circuit. I'll take you through how you set it up in a second. And this is what you're more used to. This is your uh, uh, TP nail puff circuit. So to date, you're probably familiar with using the nail puff for early stabilization. In recent years, it's become clear from observational studies that most babies that are born early are actually breathing by themselves by the time they reach the resuscitator. And unfortunately, we do like to support them with CPAP, but we now know that if you apply a face mask to a baby who's breathing spontaneously through the trigeminocardiac reflex, you can induce apnea. So where you're trying to actually get babies to breathe by themselves, applying a face mask is maybe sometimes on occasions a little counterintuitive. So having alternative means of CPAP provision right from the start, which avoid the use of a face mask, is probably a good thing. Okay, so next I'm going to show you how to set up the RPAP circuit. Okay, in the next uh, section I'm going to show you how you set up an RPAP circuit. This is the little RPAP driver. You can see on it there's a dial with pressure and there's PIP and CPAP dials. There's two holes at the front and there's one hole underneath. The circuit comes in a bag. There's the blue inspiratory limb and the white expiratory limb. To get things connected before you start, there's only one way to do it. Blue goes in the big hole, white goes in the small hole. And then at the end of the circuit, I don't know if you can see this, there's a little device that you can occlude if you want to give extra breaths. And on the end of it, there's a little holder of the nasal prong and what you want to do is select a prong size which you estimate is going to be about the right size for the baby that you're attending the delivery of. So you can put that on before you start. Then what you want to do is connect the flow of gas into the RPAP device Normally the green tubing is connected into the nail puff device so it can be removed and connected to the under part of the RPAP system. And then before you start you can set the flow and deliver the amount of peep and pip that you choose before the baby's born. So let's say we put the flow to 10 litres, just like nail puff. If we include the prongs, you can see I'm getting a CPAP level. And then if I turn the dial, that level can be adjusted up or down to whatever I desire. I'm going to set the peep on this occasion to about 7. Then, if we include the top, we get a peak inspiratory pressure level, which can also be adjusted using the button on the right. So on this occasion I'm going to choose a PIP of about 20 because I know this is going to be a small preterm infant. That's about 20. So that's the RPAP system ready to go whenever the baby's born. Next I'm going to talk through exactly the sequence of events that should happen at birth if you're planning to use the RPAP system. To begin with, there will be a paediatrician in attendance at the delivery, either by caesarean or vaginal delivery. And the first thing is to try, where possible, to allow at least 60 seconds of delayed cord clamping. So the baby will be remaining attached to the umbilical cord with the paediatrician, gently providing skin stimulation. And randomized trials have shown that if you do repetitive skin stimulation, baby saturations are better at the time of the move to the resuscitator. 
So after 60 seconds of delayed cord clamping, the cord is cut. Usually by this stage, the baby is actively crying or breathing. In observational studies, only around 10% of babies remain apneic at the end of 60 seconds of delayed cord clamping. The priority then is to get the baby into the bag under the radiant warmer in order to prevent heat loss and then to make a decision about whether the baby needs lung inflations or whether you're satisfied that the baby is breathing spontaneously adequately enough just to proceed with putting on the RPAP system. So if the baby is apneic by the time they reach the resuscitator, then you need to proceed with lung inflation in the normal way. And probably for that, your old familiar bag valve mask and nail puff is what you would use. And you must make sure that the oxygen supply is therefore going through the nail puff device with the appropriate pressure set. And you would proceed with the usual lung inflations until you're satisfied that the baby has an adequate heart rate and is breathing well spontaneously. Most babies don't actually need bagging because they are already spontaneously breathing by the time they reach the resuscitator. So for the majority of infants, we don't need to bag them before we proceed with applying the RPAP resuscitation device. To apply the RPAP device, in a spontaneously breathing baby, the first priority is to get the CPAP hat in position with this little part at the front and these two Velcro clips at the front through which the grey Velcro material can be pulled tight to allow securing. Before you uh, start the planned resuscitation, it's useful to allocate which team member is going to take charge of which job. One person can be allocated to hat application while somebody else gets allocated to application of the pulse oximetry probe because it is important to establish regular monitoring to determine what oxygen the baby is in and to determine if they have an adequate heart rate while they're transitioning in those first few minutes after birth. Once the grey connectors have been fed through the three holes in the hat in the usual way, starting underneath first, then over under, then it's important to secure the RPAP device in position using the Velcro fasteners on the hat, because the aim will be to have the ability of the baby to remain on CPAP without any paediatricians holding on to anything. You can see here we've got device nicely secured and everything connected nicely to the hat. And because the oximeter is on we should be getting continuous feedback about the baby's saturations and heart rate and we should be able to dial up the oxygen from the wall according to the baby's sats and make a judgment about whether or not the baby's developing early signs of RDS because the next decision that has to be made is whether we proceed with Lisa surfactant before the baby is brought to mum for some skin to skin or whether the baby is sufficiently well to proceed straight to skin to skin without consideration of CPAP therapy. And this will largely depend on what oxygen the baby needs to keep them pink. Once you're satisfied that baby is breathing spontaneously, is well saturated, doesn't need immediate surfactant treatment, then it's time to consider whether you can proceed with the delivery room cuddle. And the aim is to allow mum and dad to spend at least a few minutes with baby without anybody else being involved in the uh, near vicinity. So hopefully nobody having to hold anything on. So with the baby in the bag, we can stretch the, the RPAP device across. Usually we would have mum's bare skin and a blanket over the baby and then we can keep an eye on the oximeter and on the baby's CPAP pressure and allow the family to have those few lovely moments of delivery room care without any midwives or paediatricians holding on to anything directly close to the mum or baby. And this allows time for parents to take videos and photographs which are often very special to them because beyond the period after this when the baby gets admitted 
It often takes weeks before their umbilical arterial and venous lines are removed and this may be the only cuddle they get perhaps for the next two to three weeks. Okay, so we've taken you through how to set up the RPAP device and how it's used in practice. The first thing then is to think about which babies we should try and use it on and also have a think about uh, whether it's actually going to be of any benefit to them or not. If we start with the evidence for RPAP, well, clearly it works. It is a, a delivery room resuscitation device and it can provide CPAP. There have been no randomised controlled trials on this device to see if it improves outcomes. These are currently underway in Scandinavia. However, bench studies have shown that the imposed work of breathing through this variable flow device is much less than it would be through the standard T-piece Napoff. So there are theoretical reasons why it might actually be easier for the baby to breathe using this device than having a face mask applied with a, with a, a, a Napoff device. The other thing is, if we allow parents to have those few precious moments of skin to skin at the start, there's no randomised controlled trials which show that that makes any difference to outcome, but it just feels like the right thing to do. Families really appreciate it, they enjoy it, when you get feedback from them they really seem to uh, appreciate those few moments that they have before the baby's taken off uh, to the neonatal intensive care unit. If you want to spend longer in the delivery room with parents, it's important to consider the fact that this gas is unconditioned and there are ways of setting up humidification circuits for RPAP uh, which may allow you to extend the time that babies can spend with mums but you've got to balance the need for the hassle of doing that versus the need to get the baby up into a safe environment and initiate your blood gases and your treatment with glucose infusions etc. Um, the sort of babies that I think uh, would benefit from the more prolonged RPAP use which might be the slightly more mature infants in whom there's not so much of a rush to get them up onto the vent later. So this device I think can be used for really any baby that requires delivery room from the start. So I would tend to pick babies less than 32 weeks gestation. Uh, ones that are between 28 and 32 weeks you might want to consider uh, them just going on the RPAP without humidification because they're not as likely to get cold. Babies less than 28 weeks gestation it might be worth also consideration of humidification of the circuit because that has been shown in randomized trials to improve the admission temperature of babies who are uh, treated with delivery room CPAP. So I'd like to encourage everybody to try and give it a go. Um, it is a device that works and I think, although it's not uh, accepted standard practice everywhere, there's certainly, to me, there's definitely some advantages of using this system over the standard T-piece device, particularly for babies that are spontaneously breathing at birth.